So it's always in the prep with me. And what I did was on the counter here, I broke it down by each meal, each item with everything that's gonna be needed for it. And I'll kind of walk you through each dish so you can have it, so you can do this at home. But um, everything's gonna be kind of cooked at different times because I do wanna manage my time here. So I'm gonna get the chicken stock on for the risotto. I'm gonna start getting the chicken cooking. I'll walk you through each step but it's gonna jump around to kind of pull everything together at the end um, so that we can form all these dishes. Hot pan, we're gonna make the filling for the enchiladas. So in here, garlic and an onion, just like a rough chop. I'm gonna sweat this out and then add some diced tomatoes and green chilies, I'll show you the can in a sec. Our chicken just came out. I'm gonna pour all those tasty drippings into here to help make our filling. Fizzle. So in our enchilada filling, I'm gonna use diced tomatoes, ShopRite brand, because they were on sale, and green chilies, because they add some great flavor. And I buy these in the can, they're already chopped, and we're gonna add pretty much just like that with all the sauce to that. And the diced tomatoes, I'm gonna add the liquid as well. I'm gonna get this cooking down. The chicken's out of the oven nice seasoned, so I'm gonna slice it up and put it in the bowl so we can put it into the filling that's cooking on the range. So you can shred it, but I'm just gonna nicely julienne it. Um, and turkey thigh, and um, turkey thighs, chicken thighs have so much more flavor than the breast. If you did do breast, you'd wanna use two forks and you could kind of pull it apart and it'd be a much more of a shredded chicken feeling. Chicken's in the bowl, and if you watch, my favorite thing, Taking the aluminum foil off, easy cleanup. Thank you to Reynolds. Our filling is cooked down. I'm gonna add the chicken in. Gonna give it a taste, season it up with some salt and pepper. I'm also gonna chop up some fresh cilantro, add it into the mix. And then we'll start filling our flour tortillas. You can do the enchiladas with corn tortillas or flour. My family, we like flour. I actually can't stand corn tortillas, um, except for frying them. Enchilada sauce has a sour cream base when you make it, like the way I do it, a blanco. Um, but because I'm cooking at home and I want it on the healthier side, a little secret and a trick is you can use plain non-fat yogurt. It tastes exactly like sour cream and it's so much better for you. It's like a little diet trick from Weight Watchers. And my kids have no idea. I'm still gonna add, there's the fresh cilantro, I'm still gonna add cheddar cheese into the mix and, and all the fat that in the cheese is fine. But this is just one like, way to have it a little bit healthier. We're gonna mix this all up, salt, pepper, we're gonna add the filling, and we'll start filling. Adding the chicken to our filling. Stir it all together. Let it rest for a couple minutes so it cools down before we start filling the tortillas. Got them all lined up on the cutting board. Um, and I don't make these spicy because my kids are gonna eat them, but if you like heat, you can buy a jar of hot salsa and pour it on top. You can use the spicy chilies when you're making the filling as well. So we're gonna roll these and get them in the dish. Roll them into that. Roll them, tuck it, and then when you sit them into the tray, put them so the seam is actually down and they'll seal because the sauce will start to cook and bu bubble on the bottom and it'll seal the tortilla so that when you scoop it, it's not all gonna fall out onto your dish. We line them up in the pan like this. I use the six inch because the casserole dishes I have, they fit in perfect. You use the longer ones, you're gonna end up cutting them and the filling's gonna fall out. The reason I used a slotted spoon in the beginning was because I wanted to get all the chicken and filling, so now I'm only left with the sauce. They're all rolled into the casserole dish and the reason it's called an enchilada is we're gonna bake it so we're gonna put this delicious sauce right over it. And then we're gonna smother it in cheddar cheese. You can use pepper jack, you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. In my house, we're using cheddar. Fresh cilantro, I'm gonna get these in the oven so that they can start bubbling and boiling. So on the menu, we're gonna do a stuffed pork tenderloin. So I got this yesterday. It's gonna have two tenderloins in it. I'm gonna butterfly them both, pound them out, and in our filling, I'm gonna use fresh spinach, mini portobello mushrooms, 
garlic, which see, remember last week, I peeled it, put it in the jar, look how beautiful it still looks, and it's easy for me just to open the top, pull out fresh garlic. We're gonna chop up an onion, just to get that all sauteing, and you can use any kind of cheese, you can use blue cheese, gouda, but there's this brand, and they have a different type besides the garlic and herb with the shallot. This goes so well, not only in dips, but in stuffing meats. I've done it with flank steak and roasted peppers. It's creamy. It adds a nice binding agent. Oh, I gotta grab eggs, because uh, we need eggs for our binding agent to make our filling. It's the mini portobellas. You can use any kind of mushroom, a shiitake, a button mushroom. I use it all, though, but just for slicing purposes, I pull out the stem, put it down on its back like this. I'm gonna do thin stripe, thin slices, and then I'm gonna rough chop the stems, and we're gonna put it in the bowl. Over here, I got my oil on nice and hot, and we're gonna saute onion and garlic to start making the filling. It's the basis of all my cooking, pretty much, is onion and garlic. Pure deliciousness. I added a little bit of butter to my onions and garlic, and here are my sliced mushrooms. Now, mushrooms do release a decent amount of like liquid, moisture, water, um, so constantly keep stirring it. If you buy button mushrooms, Sometimes they release a little bit more, so you might want to drain out before we put it back in the bowl. We're gonna let these sweat on out. Okay, everything in the bowl. We did fresh spinach. Down here is the cheese. I'm gonna mix this all together. It is hot. You see the steam coming out, but it's okay. It's actually, that's the only reason I didn't cook the spinach. It's because I knew I was gonna add the hot filling, so it's gonna wilt it. Um, I'm gonna let this cool while I get the pork tenderloin over there pushed. So I added the egg and I'm mixing it together. And to bind it, I also am gonna add a little bit of breadcrumb, just because we want the filling to have a nice thickness to it. So when it gets cooked into the pork tenderloin, it doesn't ooze out everywhere. So it was always probably like around half a cup of breadcrumbs in here. So we're gonna let this cool on the side and we'll start doing the tenderloin. We're gonna go hands-free for this one. Um, so tenderloin on the cutting board. Trick is, Fingers up, holding down with some weight so you get a nice even cut, and you're gonna slide the knife down the whole middle. As it opens, pull it back a little bit and do the same motion again. So now, in essence, you'll be able to open it. I'll take this so you guys can see a little bit better. And now it's flat. Now we can pound it out and put both of them. I'm gonna do the other one. We're gonna put them together on a piece of foil spray to we'll pound them out and then we'll fill them and roll it. Doing something like this, stuffing the pork tenderloin, great. T throw yourself a dinner party, it takes your food to another level because it's fancy food. Um, if you have it all prepped out, so I have the pork tenderloin on the cutting board, plastic wrap, I have my foil ready, I can work a lot faster and more efficient. Now I realize that my mallet is at the kitchen and uh, it, on one side you can like pound the mallet, meat tenderizer kind of thing. So I'm gonna use a good old fashioned saute pan, which you could use as well at home, and we're going to apply pressure and hit while we pound it out. Enchiladas are coming out of the oven. Look at that deliciousness. This is going to be an easy, great dinner. This is one of those dinners also you can do ahead, put the top, these casserole dishes come with um, the plastic lids that go on, let it cool, put it in the fridge, and your kid can scoop this, you can scoop it for your husband who's working late, and just put it on the plate and have a dinner. Okie dokie, we pounded the pork, and we have the filling. I seasoned both sides with salt and pepper, and now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and do this hands-free, is I'm gonna put the filling in the middle, and I already have my butcher twine here because we're gonna roll it up. I wiped out the pan right there, and we're gonna sear it before we put on the sheet pan. Butcher twine, good little trick. That's why we greased up the aluminum foil. Hold on, let me angle this like this. You're going to take it, loop it around, shimmy it, now you didn't have to move the meat and the grease on the aluminum foil, non-stick spray helped slide this. So when we roll it now, we can start tying it up at the same time. We are all tied up, and this is why we seasoned it salt and pepper beforehand, because now we're gonna go sear it in the pan. Bang. Meat, hot pan, Woo going on over. Hear that sear, so this is gonna help lock in all the flavor and the juices. We're gonna go rotate it around, and I already have my pan greased here. Pop it here, bring it to the oven, So we do around three minutes on each side, and then we whip. You want to 
want to get that nice sear. As soon as we rotate it all the way around, we will put it on the sheet pan. Seared the whole loin, and now we're gonna put it in the oven. I got the oven at 350. It's gonna go in for around 45 minutes. Veggies, onions, shrimp. I do the 2125 frozen bag, ready to go. Got my oil in the pan so we can saute. And these are the noodles, and water's boiling, so we're gonna blanch them. Hot oil. Ooh, veggies are in. Once the veggies have softened, pop in your shrimp, and we're gonna season this up. Once the water chest up to the baby corn, and like I said last time, anything out of a can, I give a really good rinse to. Um, so the corn, I'm just gonna cut in half and throw into our bowl that will mix everything together. Okay, so our soy, a little rice vinegar, I'm adding in are some of the other veggies, the corn and the water chestnuts. Now, I'm gonna taste it. If I feel like I um, need more salt, instead of adding salt, I'm using soy. So be very careful, don't salt and pepper this until you taste it, because soy obviously is salt-based. Um, and then sometimes recipes, a lot of Asian recipes, call for honey. Um, I personally like using agave, uh, but if you have honey, you can use honey. I just like the consistency that um, agave gives a little bit better. So if I need to sweeten it up a little because it's tart from the rice vinegar, use a little agave or honey. Okay, so you guys have seen me make risotto before. So we have our stock in the back, which I ended up pulling an extra quart out of the freezer. But that's our homemade stock that I make in the kitchen. I pulled it out of the freezer, getting it nice and warm. Got my pan on. We're gonna start with my favorite, onions and garlic. Garlic and onions are sweated. I have my risotto, so this is the brand I'm using. And I opened it, it comes cryovac. Pop a hole, and we're gonna add this into our garlic and onions and butter and olive oil and start toasting it up and coat it. I just gotta grab a ladle and we'll start ladling in the chicken stock. Got myself a hot pan and I put that corn in here. Because it was raw, it's not canned corn, I do wanna cook it a little bit before I add it to the risotto. You can also turn on the grill and char it up on the grill and make grilled corn into the risotto. It adds like a nice different flavor. Uh, come over here, we're gonna give this a stir. You can start to see the broth is really starting to get encompassed. So when that happens, we just keep adding. Love risotto, just takes time, patience. Your Italian grandmother would say, patience is a virtue. Actually, my mother says that all the time, but patience is a virtue. And uh, another really important cooking tip, have fun like this. It's supposed to be fun. I mean, I know it's a chore sometimes to cook and everything, but there's nothing better. It's a little early for a glass of wine, but put some music on, just get my groove. Pork loin is out, so we're gonna let it rest before I cut the strings off. What I did do is take all the drippings, and I took around two cups of that chicken stock to get in a boil, and I put the drippings in here, and I'm gonna reduce this down just to make a little bit of sauce for it. I'm gonna use some of this risotto that's done here right now. Well, it's, the risotto's cooked, but it's not seasoned up or finished by any means. And I'm already taking it out because that's what I'm gonna use to make my rice balls. So before I add the cream and parm to here, I wanna take out some um, to let start cooling for our rice balls. Now I'm gonna finish up the risotto here with a little bit of heavy cream, um, Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, and we're gonna add the corn. Just so you can see the finished product. There it is, nice round stuffing. So you can see the finished product. There it is, stuffed pork loin. Slice it up, I have the gravy on the side. It smells so good in here. Took these out of the fridge, and now, see how they firmed up? We're going to egg wash first, and then into breadcrumb. Uh, on the stove behind me, I have the oil on, just good old vegetable oil heating up, and then we're gonna fry these babies up. Hot oil in a pan, We've got our paper towels ready, and we are going to drop in our risotto balls. So you constantly wanna turn them, the rice balls, just so that they golden brown on each side. I mean, obviously when I'm in the kitchen, it's a commercial fryer, which is a lot easier, but this is no problem. 
Um, also, the oil will be clean. We're going to put it through a coffee strainer and you can reuse this oil once it cools down. So no reason just to use oil one time. Just like my chicken cutlets, I only add parm after they come out and they're nice and hot. Um, so just going to coat them. So with the rice balls, you can use any kind of rice. You can make them any size you want. Um, these are like three, four bites. You can do mini ones for an appetizer, serve it with some marinara. You could do some big ones and serve it with a big uh, bowl of tomato soup. Tons of different things you can do, but it's a great way to use leftover rice. You can cut prosciutto and ham into it. You can do peas or corn. Um, you can use long grain rice, short grain. You can use brown rice, depends on what you want. I've done these with quinoa, it doesn't come out as good, but these are gonna be some tasty, creamy risotto balls. Kitchen's clean. Those were meals that I did today that you guys requested by sending me a message, so happy to do it again next week. Just right now, we're a little bit on the slower side.